You're welcome back. This is Newsfile. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, as always, we put Ghana first. My guests this morning on your most authoritative news analysis platform, Professor H. Kwesi Prempe, Executive Director, Ghana Center for Democratic Development, CDD. I used to lecture in Sitting Hall in the United States of America. I used to teach law. Dr. Arthur Kobina Kennedy, his physician, political activist, and chair, NPP Communications Committee 2008 campaign. Godwin Eduji Kujo Tameklo is director, legal directorate of the National Democratic Congress. Richard Anyagba is director of communications, New Patriotic Party. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much for making time to join us. On good morning. Fire. Good morning. Right. I'm going to begin the discussion donating my take time to first Professor H. Kwesi Prempe. The CDD issued a statement insisting that the bail on proper human sexual rights, family values, whatever you call it, does not simply pass master. To, to wit, it is pure unconstitutional. He will explain why they say that to us. And then we'll zoom in onto the questions arising as to the risk if the country passes this bill into law. But Let's hear from Parliament some of the developments after the passage. Afenyo Marking led for the side of the majority and on his own um, front because he's been against some of the procedures and some of the aspects of the law. That the issues that members of parliament led by my good self raised ought to be tested by the supreme court of the law law of the land i mean we are a growing democracy this is not an emotional journey these are about laws that have to do with the rights of citizens so the test here is whether or not a sexual right which is in itself being brought to question, should lead to a criminal penalty. In other words, if as a nation we say that our value systems do not support man-to-man -man relationship, woman-to-man -woman relationship, are we also saying that the means of reforming people with that orientation is to incarcerate them? How does this position stand in accord with the Constitution. Also, the issues of advocacy, saying that the media house cannot take certain steps. How that, do we just suppose that within the context of the Constitution? All these are matters that I believe that if they are tested in our Supreme Court, is going to help us to bring this matter to a good rest. For me, like I've always said, it is good to legislate against same-sex relationship. It's good to legislate and even criminalize those who will entice under, under age, young boys who are not of age, adults who try to engage in pedophilia. Those ones, yes, because a child below 18 does not have the necessary men's, men's to Take a decision. It's not an adult enough. Pay our laws. So you cannot entice such a person. That's for that one. We agree. But if you say that when somebody is in that situation and the person must suffer a jail term, I think that there's a problem. And the Catholic Church, uh, a couple of days back, came out strongly to make a passionate appeal on that matter. Uh, I believe that 
we would have to test the law on it and see. In any event, as a country, tolerance is part of our value system. Tolerance is part of our value system. So either way, we must find a middle ground. Ultra-conservatism can alone not be the way to reform a society, transform a society, and uh, help grow a society. Our judiciary has a new sentencing regime, which sentencing regime talks about non-custodial sentencing as a form of reform, as a form of correction. And we know that the conditions in our prisons do not help in achieving that object of transforming, that object of correcting, that object of reforming people with such behavioral traits. So we have to uh, proceed with some caution and again urge a strong uh, view in testing the law at the Supreme Court so that we, we know where we are moving to as a state. Then perhaps a journalist can give it a try. But suffice it to say that I have learned that today a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. In the circumstances, it would be as well for all of us to hold our hands and await the decision of the court before any action is taken. Without any act of doubt, it's an insult to the good people of this country to say that Ghana as a sovereign country, as a sovereign independent country, must subsume the rights, interests, and aspirations of people to the altar of the interests and, and, and beliefs and values of external bodies like the IMF, World Bank, and who. So the interest of the World Bank, IMF, and is more than that of Ghanaians. It's a tragedy. It's very disappointing that the finance ministry, headed by a minister a while ago who spoke highly, about the pride of our country, all of a sudden will be taking this position. The flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, to speak on this matter. The former president, John Raman Mahama, and the candidate for the NDC has spoken and he has made his position clear. Are you saying that when he comes to power, he will need foreign aid? He's aware of the implications, but he has just opposed the harm that this will cause us vis-a-vis -vis the income or the wealth that we are going to get from foreign aid. Right, so you heard a Fenyo Marking majority leader. Um, you heard His Excellency the President of the Republic, Nanado Danko Akufuado, and you heard some members of Parliament uh, of the opposition expressing their disappointment at the conduct of the president. Now, like I announced earlier, let's begin with the CDD's um, director, who, whose outfit issued a statement and said this was completely wrong. It is, he says, it was an unconstitutional act. How do they justify that? And for those of you joining us on our various social media handles, let us know. Should Ghana call the bluff of all the entities that are threatening aid if this law is passed? Should Ghana call their bluff and assert its independence, quote unquote, or sovereignty? Professor H. Kwesi Prempe, thank you so very much for making time to join us, sir. Very much, Samson, for having me on your show. It's been a while. That's right. So, help us understand what the CDD and like minded CSOs, including the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, mean when you say that this bill is unconstitutional, it does not pass master. Robson, um, again, uh, thanks for having me on the show. And um, I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, 
Um, it's interesting that in, in this introduction, you have mentioned the, the Human Rights Commission. Um, I'm quite delighted to, to hear you mention it because in this debate, as it has unfolded, it appears that we have, we have taken our human rights education um, on this matter, not from the expert constitutional body charged with human rights education and enforcement, which is charged, but from the proponents of the bill. We have allowed, and I think the media is, is, is highly complicit in this, we have allowed definitions of what constitutes human rights and what does not to be led by Mr. Sam George, Mr. Fouamini and the likes, uh, neither of whom I know to be human rights experts and certainly not to have uh, expertise on human rights that supersedes what Shraj has. Shraj has featured very little in this debate. So I find it, I find it actually, I'm glad that at least you have acknowledged that Shraj too, not just a bunch of 18 uh, professors or, or, or intellectuals or however you call us, uh, or not just CDD. But let me begin, uh, you know, uh, by, by putting this in context. I think one of the things that has happened in this conversation is really um, a mischaracterization, gross, grotesque mischaracterization of, of what this bill is and is not. When I listen even to uh, the Honorable Afenio Markin, he begins, you know, he talks about the bill and then immediately uh, transitions into conversations about pedophilia. This bill is not about adults having sex with children. That was already criminal. And if in fact, if, if it was about that, the more culpable group would be largely heterosexuals, right? So if you look at the defilement cases, if you look at teenage pregnancy in this country, we know that those are largely heterosexual cases. So it's not about pedophilia or defilement. It's not about rape. Rape is already criminalized. And if you have non-consensual sex with somebody, whether you are homosexual or heterosexual, it is rape. It is punishable under the law as it must be. It is not about same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage is already not allowed under our law, and you cannot do it. In fact, if you're married under the ordinance, uh, uh, um, no, it's, it's I, 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 I misspoke. I mean, same-sex marriage is already not uh, uh, allowed under our law, so this is not about same-sex marriage. Nobody is making a claim for same-sex marriage, right? And it is important to also note that this law is not emanating from anybody in the gay community. The Ghanaian gay community has not asked for anything. They are sitting there somewhere and some people bring a bill. So what, what this bill is seeking to do is essentially homogenize a certain sexual orientation that we in the majority possess. And the fact that a small minority in our population may not possess the same sexual orientation or may not exhibit social, the same sexual orientation has become for us something we can't live with. And therefore, the majority is trying to homogenize one form of sexual orientation and impose it on everybody else. I think what we are seeing in this bill is a lack of appreciation of just some humility about the fact that we do not know certain things about nature and about life. We do not know why certain people are homosexual and others in the majority may not be. We do not know why a small population of, or a small, a small uh, uh, you know, uh, proportion of the population may end up being gay. But instead of looking at this issue and accepting with some intellectual honesty that we don't know, we are rather trying to criminalize an identity that we don't understand. So this is what I, I want to set as the context, what this bill is not about. Now, in terms of the constitution, we at CDD um, uh, certainly have looked at this bill 
And we've made our views known to the Commission, uh, uh, to the Committee of Parliament right from the beginning. There are two angles at which we look at the constitutionality question. One, if you take the bill as a whole, and, and, and you know, when we talk about the bill, it's important to understand that the bill has multiple parts, many, many, many different parts. And usually we just lump all of them and say the bill, has, you know, the bill, the bill, the bill. It's important when we get to the human rights context to actually put the bill, just take the bill apart and look at its provisions. But let's take it as a whole. When you take the bill as a whole, we believe it offends the constitution because it violates one of the constitutional provisions designed to safeguard some separation of powers here between what kind of a bill the executive may propose and what kind of a bill parliament through a private member may propose. So under Article 108, the Constitution makes clear that unless a bill is introduced by or on behalf of the president, parliament shall not proceed on it if it has certain kinds of fiscal effects, if it, it, if it has certain effects on public funds and the like, right? So we have, from the beginning, taking the position that while we have been very supportive from the beginning of, on the idea of private members' bills, we think it's a great idea for private members in parliament to be able to sponsor bills so that if the executive is not acting to solve a certain public problem, that at least private members of parliament can take initiative. So the principle of private members' bill we support. However, the constitution imposes certain constraints on what you can do with a private members' bill and what you cannot. And we've taken the position that this bill is not the kind of bill that a private member is allowed to introduce and that parliament is allowed to pass because of the nature of the effects that it has on the public treasury. The, so that's the, the first position. Yes, on the first issue, the president has already rejected or declined to assent two bills or three so far on the basis that, on the basis of the argument you make. But, Precisely. But this bill does not require <clears throat> the setting up of any offices or anything of the sort. So how do you explain how public finances I mean, should be committed? It's, it's, you know, we, there's, there's a division of labor that the constitution uh, uh, erects or installs between when it comes to money matters and who manages our spending and all of that, Parliament appropriates. The government presents its budget proposals to Parliament. Parliament uh, examines them, has hearings, budget hearings, and then it appropriates. From that on, from that period on, it is the duty and the prerogative of the executive to spend to make expenditures out of the appropriated funds and account for it through Auditor General's reports and the like. Now, the scheme that 108 sets up, which is not new to Ghana, by the way, it comes out of our Westminster tradition, is that you do not allow a private member to micromanage the way government spends its funds that have been appropriated already. So one of the ways to prevent that is that in the course of the year, outside of the appropriations framework, you do not allow a private member in parliament to begin to impose unfunded mandates on the executive, to begin to say, spend your money on this, spend money on that, do this. And My do question that. is that you demonstrate this to bill, us how public funds will be involved here. Absolutely. I mean, you are going, you are asking midstream, outside the uh, appropriations framework, you are asking the government, you are criminalizing a whole new range of conduct uh, through, through private uh, members' bill. You are asking law enforcement to, to go and arrest a whole number of people. Our, our budgets for the police are determined already. You are asking the prison's uh, establishment to incarcerate a whole number of people as a result of this. And so this is the kind of effect that it's going to have. And it's going to have it outside of the appropriations framework. If the, so law, if the law were to be interpreted this way, could there ever be a private member's of bill? Of course. 
Absolutely. That the president the assented to the uh, witchcraft bill. People are, will be arrested. Been, people will be arrested for calling uh, people witches, and if, they will if, be prosecuted. Is government if spending? The, if the president assented to it, we would say that is wrongful. It doesn't make it. It doesn't. We would. It says that it's also unconstitutional. The, 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 there is an appropriate, and in fact, it is not strange that when you look at it, what Article 108 is really trying to say is to carve out the area of criminal legislation as more or less the, a, an area that government must take initiative in. Because, you know, criminal legislation implicates the sovereign power of the government in a very exceptional way. So private members bills can be used to do a lot of things, code of conduct for public officers, asset declaration, a number of things that will not involve, implicate or draw in the state criminal law enforcement or imprisonment functions and all of those things. But when you are in the realm of criminal law, you cannot avoid imposing uh, these kinds of un unfunded mandate obligations of the state. So that's how we have looked at the bill as a whole. That's on the one side. Then when you take the bill apart into its constituent parts, and it has multiple parts, right? Look at, I mean, people, we know that the proponents of the bill have taken advantage of the fact that most of us are not going to take our time to read the bill. And we know most people haven't, including mm. most people who vociferously oppose it, haven't taken the chance to read the bill. But the bill does a lot of things. I've told you the things that, you know, are already criminalized, and therefore the bill doesn't really add anything if it says, except that even where, for example, the bill tries to, you know, give more clarity to the existing law on, on natural canon knowledge, you may not have certain kinds of sex, right? You may not have certain kinds of sex, even if it's consensual. But those kinds of sex you may not have, the bill limits mostly, largely only to LGBTQ people. So in a very funny way, you have a sexual conduct that is supposed to be unnatural, mm. is supposed to be abhorrent, and yet heterosexuals can engage in that sexual conduct under this bill, but homosexuals cannot. So clearly, you know, what is the point of it? If, if the what is the offensive and what is unnatural is a sex act, then why discriminate as to whose conduct is criminal and whose conduct is not. Mm. It should be equally criminal done by LGBT people or done by uh, heterosexuals. But th that is only one way in which the, the bill affects conduct. Mm. What is more interesting actually okay. is that the bill also criminalizes identity itself. So normally we use criminal laws to attack acts, not, not status or identity. So here you have a situation where the bill says merely because you say you are gay, merely because you hold yourself out as a gay person, that itself is criminal. And then it proceeds also talking about you know, things like public display of affection. We have a culture here in Ghana, long standing, where same sex friends, men, and men, women and women, hold hands, put their hands around their shoulders and walk in public. We've done it as children, we've done it in school. We, it is part, you know, for sometimes when visitors come to Ghana, the thing they find amusing is how Ghanaians can, same sex friends can show affection like that in public. Under this bill, that puts you immediately under suspicion that you are a gay person. And so you wonder who is importing a foreign culture here? How is it that something that mm. we have lived with, right? Hand-holding, hand-holding. Mm. Now, very soon under this bill, if you find that in your neighborhood, I mean, when we're kids, how many uh, neighborhoods, uh, in, in how many homes uh, did we have uh, young men having their own rooms? Neighborhood boys had usually some room, you know, one fortunate neighborhood boy who had his little crib, that's where all the boys will hang out, and sometimes they will sleep together on the bed. Same sex friends, not having sex, not having anything, just friends. Now, these kinds of things that we have had in our society for a long time mm. will put you again under 
suspicion of being a gay person, mm. and that is criminal. So, so and even even things like I mean, I, I, I'll finish on this point. So I'm right. just giving you examples because okay. it's one thing to look at the bill as a mm. whole mm. from a 108 perspective, and it's another thing to also look at the bill in its separate parts from the human rights perspective. And when you look at the bill that way, so many of its provisions are offensive. Okay. So you well, also have a situation. Now I'll give you I'll give you my 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 last example of this on 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 this point. Thank you. So so I've I've I've, I've spoken about how it criminalizes just mere identity without reference to conduct. How it criminalizes certain conduct that are deemed unnatural or offensive only if they are undertaken by homosexuals, but not by heterosexuals. How it criminalizes innocuous acts that we have always had in our society, hand holding, putting your, your hands around your friend's shoulders, walking in the street, now puts you under suspicion of being homosexual. And then, you know, the more bizarre one is that even if you advocate, if you advocate for a change in the legal, the legal status of gay persons, so assuming that this bill passes, right and then we as cdd consistent with the values of the organization consistent with our human rights uh posture on this bill continue to advocate a repeal of this bill because we deem it offensive we deem it a violation of human rights we continue to advocate it mm. we have we become advocates of the human rights of the lgbt community not even the constitution all right the constitution even the constitution can mm. be changed okay even the constitution, the supreme law of the land can be changed. Mm. All right. this bill, advocacy of the, the kind intended to do away with this, with this obnoxious legislation will actually raise again, expose one to you know, the, the danger of arrest. Of right, that's what's been so described as a reintroduction front. of criminal libel. Now, uh, Prof, on thank you. Front, on multiple fronts, this, this bill is unconstitutional as a whole and in, in the past in which I've broken it down into. I, I, I like your 30 seconds response to this quickly for me. Um, you are talking about gay community. How can we say that in a country where uh, Section 104.1b of our Criminal Offenses Act, Act 29, prohibits unnatural carnal knowledge, that is homosexuality. I, I appreciate no. that that does not pro prohibit uh, lesbianism but it prohibits homosexuality how can we no, even say it gay community it, it prohibits sodom what it prohibits is as it is been, as it's been understood it promises it it's it, uh it prohibits um a, a certain kind of sex right and we have come to understand it as pro prohibiting or prescribing sodomy or anal sex right that is not conduct that is engaged in exclusively by homosexuals. And unnatural carnal yes, knowledge yes. at common law is defined as penal penetration of anything uh, other than the vagina. Well, exactly. So if a man, if, 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 a, if a, 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 a boyfriend has anal sex with a girlfriend, that is a homosexual? These are heterosexuals doing it, right? If a husband has anal sex with a wife, these are heterosexuals doing it. And these things are okay. We know that these things are okay. Mm. okay. So again, it is not something that is exclusively confined to the community you would call the homosexual community. What if you focus on the act, right. then the acts that we say are in violation mm. are acts that are gender neutral, are sexual orientation neutral. Thank you. What, what do you say to the proponents who say that this bill is simply a consolidation of existing laws that um, you refer to the Marriages Act. It defines what we mean by marriage, man to woman, woman to man, nothing else. They say they, this is what they have put in the bill. When you look at this bill, they are talking also about questions of adoption. They say, for certain reasons, you cannot adopt, which is already in our existing statutes. They refer you to Article um, 
39, which says, and let me read quickly um, Article 39. 39 says, the state shall, subject to availability, uh, the state, subject to clause 2 of this article, the state shall take steps to encourage the integration of appropriate customary values into the fabric of national life through formal and informal education and the conscious introduction of cultural dimensions to relevant aspects of national planning. The state shall ensure that appropriate customary and cultural values are adopted and developed as an integral part of the growing needs of the society as a whole, and in particular that the traditional practices which are injurious to the health and well-being of the person are abolished. They say this is what they are simply doing. Let me respond to, to uh, the points you have raised, which are uh, interesting. One, that this is just consolidating existing law. It is not. I mean, existing law does not prescribe holding of hands by same-sex friends. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't prescribe advocacy to change an existing law, you know, that you don't, you think is offensive. It doesn't prescribe being a gay person. Right? It prescribes, existing law prescribes certain acts. And those acts that are prescribed are prescribed as to all persons, regardless of who, what your sexual orientation is. On natural kind of knowledge, as we have come to understand it, is sodomy, anal sex, whoever does it is, is, is offend that provision. This law, however, for example, using the natural knowledge example, that becomes now, something that only if only if homosexuals did it, then it's offensive. But heterosexuals can so it, it discriminates. Mm. Then, of course, I've told you all the things that this, all the new things this bill right. introduced. Mm. Mm. Now, let me take those two public institutions uh, uh, you mentioned: adoption and marriage. It's very important for us to understand this distinction. Uh, and, Prof, and I need to summarize this in a minute for sure. me. Sure. I, I will, I will, and, and it, because people like to muddy the waters by bringing in these two things. Adoption and marriage are public institutions. They are creatures of law, right? You, 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 your marriage is not recognized outside of the legal framework because it's a public institution. You need the blessing of the state for a marriage to be a marriage under our law, right? You need the state's involvement for adoption for you to have adoption privileges. So what the state creates, the state can reasonably regulate. Absolutely. The state can regulate marriage as it does in every jurisdiction, and the state can regulate adoption. What we are talking about here is the state regulating private consensual sex and private consensual romantic relationships. Those are not things that the state created for us. Those are very natural things, like sleep, right? Those are very natural things that, as you exist as a human being, you will fall in love, you will fall out of love, you won't have sex. If you want, you may not have sex. But these are private things that consenting adults can do. It's right. not marriage, and mm. it's not adoption. So when the state extends its long hand, which it is entitled to, extends it from... Uh, 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 adoption and from marriage into the private bedrooms and the private spaces of people, that is an overreach. All that right. is a difference. Thank you very much, and Prof. And the last one is the culture point. I need to meet, mm. I need to meet your, your point about culture. What you read to me does not say the directive principles of state policy, right? It's not saying that we must impose a monolithic culture on all Ghanaians or cultural preference or cultural practice on all Ghanaians by criminal law. It says, and we have to be careful not to read it outside the context of chapter five's provisions on culture, that individuals have a right to manifest their own culture. There is no monolithic Ghanaian culture that we all must subscribe to. We all cannot speak with an Afri American accent. Okay. We all cannot be forced to wear clothes to funeral. Mm. those kinds of things so the rights regarding culture are for us as individuals mm. what the state is however saying is that the state we we might be encouraged as Ghanaians to exhibit Ghanaian culture thank you prof and we do that by mm. saying friday 
wear Ghanaian cloth and all of those things. That's how right. you do it. Thank you very much. Let me go to Dr. Arthur Kennedy. And Dr. Arthur Kennedy, you wrote an article and simply called on Parliament to and the country to look back to the independence struggle, how our forebears were bold in overcoming colonialism, the imperialists. And you say they should simply call the bluff of the what Samuel Kujato refers to as the arrogance of the diplomatic, you know, missions and so forth. Um, there's this uh, gentleman who also agrees with you, uh, Kweku Agre Oliens. He also writes and says, Ghana's parliament has placed an independence bomb on the president's desk with the Supreme Court being called on to hopefully act as the bomb disposal unit. He shares the view also that an independent parliament, a sovereign parliament, should not be subjugating what it is doing to a foreign pa pa party. You are making all these bold statements, ignoring the risk that the finance ministry points us to, potentially losing $3.8 billion. We are broke. Things are really difficult for people at the moment. Hello, Doc. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Yes, Doc. Um, I lost you there for a moment. But How um, do you call I, the bluff of the multilateral institutions in the name of asserting your independence when you are broke, you are poor? Well, um, good morning to all your listeners and happy Independence Day. Mm -hmm. um, I think I want to uh, step back a little bit before I come to that point. I actually think um, this is an unfortunate debate. And once again, we are actually <clears throat> reacting to the stimulus of other people. We are having a Pavlovian response that um, the West has decided that this is important. And all of a sudden, we've dumped them, made it a priority. I think that the time we've used discussing this should have been used discussing um, problems that are more germane to large majorities of our population, childhood labor, domestic violence, um, inheritance in marriage, pollution of our environment, you know, children going to school under trees, all those are things that I think are very significant. But I think we are taking on what I call the passions of mature societies who have time and are not in crisis. Having said that, um, I think that Professor H. Kwesi Prempe, my Vanda mate I haven't seen for a long time, and I greet him, um, makes excellent points, except that I think his interpretation of Article 108 is too broad. Because if we take that, then private members' bills might not be able to do um, virtually anything, even the declaration of access and others. Most things will require more investment in the time of civil servants or public officials. So I think that it is becoming a little bit of a fig leaf under which um, executives are going to oppose things that they don't like. Having said that, I think the process that we went through um, to pass this bill that we are discussing um, was unfortunate. And uh, Kwame Pianim makes an excellent point in an interview a couple of days ago that a lot of the fears that are being raised by the finance ministry and others should have been part of the process of passing the bill, engaging the parliament, and that, in fairness, even the president, apropos Kwesi Prempe's point, didn't need to wait for the bill to be passed, that he could have called the leaders of parliament, engaged them privately, sent his ministers to talk to them. In other words, he should have used his influence to try and shape the bill um, so that it will get to an acceptable one. Having said that, to comment on the substance of the bill. But, 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 but Doc, you know they have done this, except that there's one thing we must agree, that there is this 
I mean, let's call a speed what it is. There's this mob lynch hysteria, fanaticism about this bill. The religious and, and so you see even MPs who want to state a position about law and procedure against the bill are careful to begin by saying, I support it. Because if they dare give an indication that they are doing anything that will give an impression that they are against it, they will be tagged, first of all, as gay. So well, nobody, nobody mean, has been listened to. The, 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 those who had contrary views have not been listened to. You don't agree? No, I don't. And actually, I think that if we say that, um, then we are making a confession on behalf of the president that he is ineffective. This is the president who managed to prevent um, parliament, his own party, from sacking the finance minister because it was important to him. So when we say that if we accept what you are saying, we are just saying that the president has been ineffective. Um, if he were effective, then we wouldn't be here. And I agree with um, Professor Percy Prempe that um, the bill, um, while I think that the general purpose of the bill is understandable, having gotten past the question about whether it is even important enough for us to engage in it, it's too broad. I think Pierre Trudeau actually defined the question of LGBT rights in 1968 when he said, our governments have no place in our bedrooms. Hmm. I think that the most serious concern about this is the invasion of people's privacy. I think that it is important to regulate public conduct, that it is good from on cultural perspectives to talk about where we want our society to go and to try and make laws that promote that. But I think um, Kwesi Prempe makes very good points about things that in effect can be done by uh, heterosexual couples and are not criminal. And when they are done by gay couples, they are criminal. That seems on the face of it to be discriminatory. But I think if the appropriate process had been engaged in, we'll find a bill that is narrower, milder, and more tailored and fit for purpose. Having said that, I think, though, that um, the response of external um, factors, you know, the US and Britain and all those people are unfortunate. You know, because I live in the US and Professor Kwesi Prempe has lived here for a long time. It took a long time for America to get to where it is on this issue was contentious. Um, and even now, that officially, the American government, as it is now, is for it. There are a lot of people in different states who actually have significant reservations about it. And indeed, if we woke up in January 2025 and there is a different government led by President Trump, the American government's posture to the rest of the world on this issue will be very different. So having said that, I think there must be continuing constructive engagement and that they should sit back while Ghanaians, competent Ghanaians like Professor Prempe, Tetua Menu and others, as well as um, the Christian Council and others um, with their compassionate elements rising up to say that, yes, we may not like this particular conduct, but this is also about love. These are our brothers and sisters, they are family so that we can reach a middle ground that is reasonable and that they should accept as um, President Mills of Blessed Memory said in 2011, that societies evolve differently. We have different perspectives that if they think they have reached a particular state, they should leave us to in effect work out our evolution in our own time and for our own purposes. Mm. I think that is the way to do it and particularly on the anniversary of our independence, these bullying tactics call to question um, our basic independence. And I think that they are compelling even people who otherwise might have concerns about this bill on grounds of sovereignty and national pride to support it. And that is counterproductive. If they set out to help the gays, at the end of the day, what they are doing is that they are making 
they are putting gays more at risk by these policies that in effect go us to exercise and show national pride. And I think that is unfortunate. You, you, you live in the U.S. Are you, are, you, are you happy about, let me find out first, have you updated your CV, for example, to indicate who you are? Because you are required to indicate if you are, is it he, she, he, uh, he, he him, or she, uh, her, hers, that, that thing. Have you updated, you required. Have you updated yes, your CV to that? not required to do that and I won't um, update my CV. I am he, him and forever that. And um, I work in the healthcare field, you know, so I understand um, the question about being sensitive about LGBT people in caring for them. The fact that um, being sensitive and being empathetic leads to better care and all that. But having said that, in, in, the, think... in the circumstances you just mentioned, sorry to cut in, you care for them as a surgeon. What should Ghanaian doctors be doing in the event that this is passed? Can they work Ghanaian in the first doctors, place? Yeah. Ghanaian doctors should be caring for patients. I take the view, and I did that even when um, I worked for a time helping prisoners, that as a physician, once somebody sits in front of you, that person is a patient, period regardless of whatever else is happening in their lives, whether they are LGBTQ, whether they are prisoners, whether they are murderers, whether they are men, whether they are women. So that is what I subscribe to. Mm. But having said, um, I think that some of these changes that um, people are seeking go a little too far, but I want to stick to the fundamentals. And I think that basically the laws that existed in Ghana before they passed this bill adequately caters for the things that we needed to cater for, that we need to guard the public space so that people do not offend our cultural sense of decency. But we ought not to be going into people's bedrooms and requiring families to report on members of their family and other things. There are some of these things that go too far. All and right. I think that a more forceful exercise of leadership on the part of the president and his cabinet should have helped shift this bill so that it will pass in a form that will be more acceptable to people like Professor Chrissy Prempe and others who are legitimately concerned. Mm. The, 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 the NDC, you are outrightly against the president's posture currently. Um, he says he will wait for a matter that has, the matter that has been taken to court, even though at the time he was speaking and indicating that the matter had been taken to court, it had, in fact, not been taken to court. There was a previous, uh, a pending one already pending, not the one he was referring to. The one he sought to refer to was only filed a day after he made those comments. Um, are you concerned when you read the finance ministry's statement pointing us to a potential loss of 3.8 billion US dollars if this were passed into law? Oh, you're asking me? No, to Edwigita Maklo. Oh, Samson, so good morning and good morning to your cherished uh, guest. It's only appropriate that I wish you a happy birthday. Thank One you. that has come to my attention. <laughs> it's important I do that. I wish you well. I think that our president, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, lost a glorious opportunity to assert the independence of Ghana. Regrettably, he postures as though he's the president of the 51st state of the United States of America. I find that conduct to be regrettable. If you read the statement the president made in front of the diplomatic communities, he says that it has come to his attention that a private person is in the courts. Again, like we, we have shown, my brother Richard the last guy suit was on the fifth of March. On the 4th, when the president made that statement, there was no such thing. So unless, of course, he knew well ahead of time that Mr. Sky was going to go to court. And if that is the case, it's quite revealing. Is it the case that Mr. Sky is an agent provocateur? 
for which reason he is acting more like a surrogate. But you see, is the president accession one that is founded in be a mere coincidence? What? But is the president accession one that is founded in law? Article 106 provides the constitutional scope when the president believes that a bill so passed by parliament, he will not assert and what he ought to do. Making assertion that somebody is in the courts and for that matter, you are being restrained from performing your constitutional responsibility. For me, it's contrived. Why do I say so? We were in this country where I, acting as lawyer, for the then minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, Honorable Kujetua Blakwa, Mahama Yariga, we went to the Supreme Court to challenge the E-Levy e Act. If you require, uh, uh, recall, sorry, when we went to the court, at the time the president was assenting the E-Levy law, there was a pending matter in the Supreme Court. Why was the president not restrained at that time and decided to go ahead? So it is either a question of forgetfulness or double standard. Each one of them does not do the image of the president any good. Mm. Now this whole claim... But, but you know that in the absence of an injunction, one can exercise a discretion to say, I am aware of the pendency of a suit, so I will not take further steps that will appear to overreach the court. So what happened in the e levy? The president is a lawyer. What happened? How come that he didn't exercise that discretion then and only now? On the vast issue, and particularly I'm so disappointed in the finance minister, the letter on Monday from the finance ministry making the claim that should the president assent, we are going to lose 3.8 billion. Potentially. Potentially. Completely hollow. It has no basis whatsoever. First of all, this government informed Ghanaians that we have entered into a staff level agreement with the IMF, correct? In this staff level agreement, was the anti gay bill a condition precedent for assessing money from the IMF? In any case, our engagement with the IMF is purely contractual. What, what we should never forget is that whatever money the IMF is giving to us, with the exception of the grant, is actually a loan payable with interest. So it is not as though the IMF is doing us some Father Christmas engagement by giving us those loans. No, we are paying those loans, sometimes at very you know, difficult interest rates. But you see, when you put all of this together, just today, uh, on the 6th of March, 2024, on the IMF page, uh, uh, page I just want to read something mm. to you. The IMF the of Uganda. Yes. Okay. The IMF itself is saying that they just completed their fifth review with the government of Uganda, of which the IMF is going to advance about one hundred and twenty million dollars to the government of Uganda. In the Uganda law, unlike what Parliament just passed, where the custodian sentence about a maximum of three years or something, in the case of Uganda, it's actually death depending on how aggravated that particular act of conduct is. So when the finance minister makes the assertion that if the president assent to rate, there's a potential loss of 3.8, it's complete red herring. Mm. It has no basis. And, 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 it, and, it must and, be noted that in the statement issued by the finance ministry, Paragraph two, I think the till end. where they say impacts on World Bank funded programs, mm -hmm. They, they say, might not be despair, dis, disbursed, may be suspended, uh, may be suspended on, the, on point three, point four. Then at point four, they say, will be suspended. Over there, categorical. they are categorical. And they point to an amount of 2.1 billion. Now, that something curiously, the World Bank itself had issued a statement. And in the statement by the World Bank, they said their relationship with Ghana relative to this matter are going on. And only indicated 
that they have their own internal programs relative to discrimination and what have you, protections for minority groups and so forth and so forth. So if you put all of this in together, I am saying that the Honorable Amin Anta, whose ministry issued that statement to the president, had no basis whatsoever, and only engaging in an alarmist act. Why the posturing by the finance ministry, although it is one of the gay uh, 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 promoters or lobbies, if you do that, it does not do well. And I've made a point. When the United States of America Congress is about to pass a law in the U.S. of A, they don't consult anybody in Ghana. Our relationship with the United States of America or the U.K. is one that is founded on mutual benefits. Look, Samson, look at the number of United States of America investment in Ghana, either in the oil sector, mining, or whatever. So the relationship is one that is even beneficial to them. Whatever we get from them, it is not something they give to us because, quote unquote, we are a beggar nation. Is it not curious that a government that for seven years anchored its economic policy programs on the basis of Ghana beyond aid, is now using aid as a basis for the president to deny his constitutional response. And even what is even more curious, is this posturing by the president to behave as though he's Pontius Pilate? I will not do it. I am leaving it to the Supreme Court. Why would the president want to set up the Supreme Court for public radical and opprobrium? Because there are questions that require executive decision. Assent to the bill. Do that. That is your responsibility. That is not the responsibility of the Supreme Court of Ghana. And so this whole attempt by Mr. President to hide under a so-called, you know, challenge at the court, which never existed, though, at the time he was making that call. Why do you discount what the president has said about this matter emphatically on the 27th of um, February 2021 at the Anglican Church, when because of some of the comments by the opposition, he had to be unequivocally clear about it. You and see, he said, I have said this before. Let me, uh, in conclusion, stress again that it will not be under the presidency of Nana Adodankwa Akofuado that same-sex marriage will be legal. That same-sex marriage will be legalized in Ghana. It will never happen in my time as president. Why do you discount that statement? Immediately he made this statement. Subsequently, the vice president of the U.S. was in Ghana. The president's body language changed. When Kamara Harris came to Ghana, the president again affirmed his position on this matter by taking a contrary view that the level of advocacy, if it increases, anything can happen. Much earlier, on Al Jazeera, he had already asserted that if the level of advocacy increases, it is bound to happen. So what's wrong with that? No, but the man says that once he was in the UK, schooling in those days. Is that not a progressive view? What is progressive about what he's saying? Look, Samson, your colleague view, your, where you grew up, right? Both cultural and religious. That's not progressively say that this should be permitted. And I am saying that in this country, the two dominant religious groups, Christianity, Islam, have a common position on this matter, forbidden. Mm. And so if the thing is forbidden, what is progressive about it? And so if the president is minded, we are saying that his worst body language and everything does not accord with the level of unanimity when it comes to the position on this matter. It's interesting. My learning senior professor, uh, uh, H. Kwesi Prempe, made the point of constitutionality of what parliament has so far done. I was expecting, respectfully, when he was making his submission, that he would have taken us a certain excursion through the constitution, either read as a whole or in part. 
what exactly is the constitutional standard now? For which reason what Parliament purported to have done offends that? I didn't see that coming out clearly. And for that matter, mm -hmm. I strongly disagree mm -hmm. with the position by the CDD mm -hmm. that Parliament in purporting to pass this thing committed a violation of the 1992 Talking about which village I come from, which, uh, you know, <laughs> denomination I belong and what the values are. Don't you agree Very well. with Benis Johnson Reagan when she writes on uh, coalition politics and says, mm. we have pretty much come to the end of a time when you have a space that is yours only, mm. just for the people you want to be there, we have just finished with that kind of isolating. There is nowhere you can go and only be with people who are like you. That it's over. We must give that up. The people running the society call the shots as if they are still living in one of those little villages where they kill the ones they don't like or put them in the forest to die. The thing that must survive you is not just the record of your practice, but the principles that are the basis of your practice. You don't feel that this is what the government appears to be responding to, that this is the kind of world we live in now. Senior, with respect. If you read, for instance, our Marriages Act, it recognizes three kinds of marriage. The customary marriage, which is potentially polygamous. polygamous. Absolutely. Can you practice polygamy in the U.S.? As many as 1895 or so, the U.S. courts have already authoritatively pronounced outlawing polygamy. Are you saying? based on the reference to the quotes, that persons who are of Islamic orientation should be permitted to marry three, four in the U.S. of A because that is what their religious belief allows them to do? No. In fact, what's coming, if you read Surah, 81, uh, Surah 7, verses 81 to 84, it makes it clear that the Prophet Muhammad in the Holy Quran, forbids that completely. How come that the, U the U.S. of A does not accept these views in Saudi Arabia? You don't think, like some believe or scholars think, that religion has been used for abuse certain times, and this is clearly one of the occasions where religion is being projected and used to abuse rights. I've read Danquist literally using religion to force the hand of you know, the president or lawmakers to determine a law on the basis of religious belief. Senior, at the faculty, one of the source materials on Ghanaian, even Akan custom, Kashmir law, is J.B. Danquist's book. Nowhere is there any proposition or suggestion that there is a Ghanaian culture that permits same-sex marriage, or the incidents related to it. Nowhere. And at least, Dankwa is authoritative. But is, on he, a, is, no, he, the, is he, does he treat that subject? That's a question. No, the point is that in discussing the question of uh, the Akan cultural laws, mm. a critical issue of sexuality okay. could not have escaped his lenses. Mm. And I'm saying that if you go to Ewe, Dabani, Frafra, Whatever, I have never seen any acceptance of this, what is being asserted by the post reference, to be permissible. And I'm saying that both culture and religion coincide interestingly on this vast issue. Okay. And the president mm. must demonstrate that he's the president of a sovereign republic right. and leave these excuses. It does not put him well. Mm. Uh, Richard, people are asking the question, regardless of all the other, you know, things that have been raised, and I've raised questions here for a good purpose, because I've also come to identify 
the hysteria with which this matter has been, you know, and the fanatism, fanaticism with which this matter has been debated. Almost, almost seeking to hang and kill those who want to express a contrary view, as if it was a crime to express a contrary view. But in all of that, you know that the ground swell, overwhelming majority view is that this is what we need. Is the, is the president respecting the Ghanaians by <coughs> his approach now? Well, thank you, Samson. <clears throat> um, I am a bit uh, 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 sad this morning, uh, owing to the very, very sad uh, departure of our brother, mm. uh, Dr. John Kuma, uh, who were away somewhere <clears throat> trying to uh, put together some uh, product for our party uh, when we heard the news. Mm. And uh, immediately the room uh, became completely overwhelmed with sorrow. Um, and so this morning I want to extend uh, uh, the deepest of all condolences to the family. And the party through the general secretary has issued a statement consoling the party, uh, their family. Uh, that will never be enough. It will never suffice even for the party, uh, for the family and the party. Uh, but we pray that God himself will uh, uh, will console the uh, the family and even the the new patriotic party. Right. Um, it's, it's, maybe it's news that. Yeah, you know, I was on this show yeah. with him. That's right. And in fact, that was the last time we met. It was on both this, of us our last public encounter. Exactly. Yeah. On, and incidentally, yeah. it was on this platform. Yeah. When I had it at the neck meeting. In fact, I, I need to. Our national chairman actually said, look, John, with everything. And so we actually have to observe a mini silence to his uh, memory. Mm. In my specific case, because he was my core mate, we entered the law faculty the same day wow. and were called to the bar the same day. Mm. And we've maintained that um, um, relationship as learned friends. So I want to, again, join you in expressing my condolence to the wife, uh, Apostle, and the children, and the new patriotic party. I mean, right. this is a deep loss. Thank so you. I knew John even before first degree at the university. And um, we have things we share. And <laughs> Yo, it's baby. my birthday, but <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to me today. Mm -hmm. And I think it's better we don't bring this up. Right. Um, at the university, you know, we have said it publicly. Yeah. We were, myself and him were working together. So actually, when he went to contest for the SRC, I was supposed to be his vice president, president okay. in that contest. And so the Abebe, was it in... So it was because I decided otherwise to, to go to a Kwafu Hall, to become a Kwafu Hall president, mm -hmm. that Abebe had to okay. you know, join him. And in the last couple of days, I've just been going through my WhatsApp conversations. And as well. Yeah. It's better we don't bring yeah, it up. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, that underscores the, the fleeting nature of life, but then he lived well. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he paid his due yeah. and, and served. Um, <clears throat> uh, something, I mean, I, I, this whole uh, LGBTQ bill, anti LGBTQ plus bill at the NDC position is just nauseating. Mm. They, they are sitting here scrambling for opportunity to blame government, finding or seeking every single opportunity to make things look gloomy in this country. And so anything that doesn't look like an issue, the NDC will, will make an issue out of it. Uh, the CDD position, an independent C, uh, CSO, reputed in this country uh, as independent-minded, uh, I think uh, Professor H. C. Premper's uh, explanation should have ended the matter. And the NDC know about this. But somehow, they are struggling along somewhat boldly, and I would say vainly, forward as if there is something there to be had. There's nothing there in this argument about LGBTQ plus and somebody is for it, 
somebody won't sign it and therefore the person is supporting or promoting gay uh, and associated behavior in Ghana. There is nothing there. The NDC should quit this matter already. Mm. Because on principle of constitutional law or our constitution uh, frowns on this matter. The idea that a private member's bill will raise cost on the, uh, the, public, uh, the public press is completely out of line. So in that regard, this conversation is moot to begin with, my brother. But then yet they are carrying on just because they don't have any issue to talk about. They're just seeking to make issue out of nothing. So my brother Edgidi says, uh, oh, President Gufuado has, um, has missed a glorious opportunity uh, to sign the bill or to make history or whatever he's seeking to say. President Gufuado rather demonstrated his sensitivities to the law to say that because there are concerns in, in the courts about this particular bill, he will not move forward to sign it up until that determination is made. And some say you helped him, and I know he knows, because he's a very good lawyer, he knows, but then he's seeking for his political purposes to conceal that knowledge. The president signed, LG says, the president signed the e-levy, even though there was a case in court. Something, if you put the two laws on a pedestal, they won't stand. One weighs heavier than the other. The consideration to do with um, you know, uh, revenue for a budget that parliament has passed, which is in motion being implemented, already having, having been delayed for five, six months. That bill having been passed should wait for a court issue to be determined. Running the economy, having approved the budget as it was in 2022, um, 2022, is almost like flying an airplane. You are in motion. Decisions you make have consequences. So you have to continue your motion. So it doesn't arise in terms of comparing that to the LGBTQ uh, bill that the president, in realizing that there are con concerns about it. Beyond... The, the economic agency on which basis you can compare this uh, LGBTQ to the E-Levy. Beyond that, Samson, the LGBTQ law that have been passed carries weight in terms of our morals and our culture and the determination we are making in our democracy to grant people space for freedom. It has consequences for people's rights. So if you are a president seeking to sign that bill, you must be clear in your mind that every consideration for every possible right of people have been considered. And you sign that only upon that satisfaction. So you don't do that arbitrarily. You don't do that because Edu G is standing in the fence to criticize you, so you sign it. You don't do that on the basis that former President Mahama, who I can tell you immediately will flip-flop on the position that I support it, will criticize you for it. You sign it because you have done due diligence, you have waited all the consideration and seen that ultimately, this will promote social good, will advance the cohesion of our society, then you sign it. So there is no hurry at all. You give it every time, every consideration. You don't, you don't think the to same argument should that. go for the, 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 the bill, the one we just referred to, what's it again? Perhaps. The, the what? Is it the witchcraft one? No, the, the, the one just, the, the e levy bill, uh -huh. that didn't have as much, as much support. Mm. The one e levy side. bill that you could say mm. that perhaps if you had put the question to Ghanaians, mm. you may have had not up to 30% of them support it. Well, you see, so the e levy, and then if I, this is, is characteristic of all tax policies. There isn't a unanimous position on any tax at all, okay? It is almost like a medicine. You know, it's for your good, but you don't like it. It has to be administered to you, okay? So that is a separate conversation. Really is at the time, if you didn't take that medicine, you're exposed to death or something more catastrophic. So you take it, even though you are crying, your parents must administer it. So that's that. This law, we have all the time in the world to look at it properly, especially because, Samson, there are current laws on the book that check 
the behavior that limit the behavior that control the behavior the additional injections or in the additional ideas we want to preemptively add to it notwithstanding it's not urgent by the way in the discussions that we have had uh, uh, just around the table shows that some aspect of this bill offends you know and is, is offends the constitution and is discriminatory so that when you are trying to regulate any sexual intercourse that penetrates uh, excuse my usage penetrates the, the anus then that between a gay is illegal but between a heterosexual is okay you can pass a law like that uh, that, it's a that, double standard. That, that appears to be a mistake in the, that lawmaking, right? Well, did you don't agree <laughs> that that you make this you can't law do that. and the things that you prohibit among same sex, mm -hmm. you allow. You allow among heterosexual, heterosexual persons. Where is that allowance? Where is that allowance? That's that's what this. No, is. the law prescribes a particular act without bond. Okay. So if you are flipping the coin to the other side. That it is possible yeah. that man woman can do these things. Yeah. That's purely speculative. No, no, this, it's, it's not speculative. No, 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 no. Hold on. At we have point, made amendments to the is it the section twelve of it or so that literally leaves the law at the state that is being canvassed now. And no, professor, uh, no, no, no. That is what I'm that saying. You, that that's what I'm saying. That if a man and a woman are in their bedroom, whatever they do, that's their own matter. It appears how do you get to even know that revision that this is was the act being performed? It appears that revision was uh, informed by the question of the use of sex toys, and they didn't think about it within same sex. <laughs> but no, I mean, that's by the way, even, these are not constitutional. Okay. When you say something is constitutional infringement or violation, mm. I mean, we are talking about heavier matters. Mm. No, oh, but, but, but I see you, you take it as a trivial matter, but it's heavy matter, oh, right? How? Or for people's, for, for a law to be that discriminatory, really? that for me, you cannot, you I mean, cannot, uh, I mean, wait till okay. you become the president, so, so, then so, you can yes. be signing so, this, uh, <laughs> this discriminatory law, but uh, pro Ado will not Proceed and conclude on your you see, submission. A very important point to be made is on the, the finance ministry note, the staff note mm -hmm. that was supposed you know, to be brought for advice and guidance for the minister in their deliberation. Uh, Eduji says, oh, that uh, it signifies some kind of hypocrisy or kutuing to... They are speaking Western. about the immediate impact yes. on the implementation of the 2024 budget. Exactly. If the law is passed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you know that the government has responsibility to implement the law as passed. I mean, the fiscal policy mm -hmm. and, um, and the economic planning uh, act of the, the government of 2024. But you see, in that um, note... There is a reference Eduji made that the IMF consideration or the agreement we have with them. The staff level agreement. Yes. Even the entire yes. agreement has no implication or this LGBT law. It's not a condition. It's not a condition and therefore has no implication for that uh, agreement. I agree. But if you read the note, they, agree, they accepted that proposition. But saying that. Even though the, the, the LGBTQ is not a condition for the IMF uh, agreement, it has implication because there's a, there are associated funding from the World Bank that must come as a basis to, uh, to ensure that the implementation goes smoothly. And therefore, if the World Bank has indicated that they will not continue in advancing that 3.8 billion to us on the basis of signing that law, then you will have implication for the, the success of the, of the deal. Mm. So it is not directly the IMF deal yeah. that is contingent, or the, the law is not contingent on Bank that, deal. but it's the World Bank uh, deal. The that World Bank has also issued that a statement. That is the advice. Yes, no, the World wait, Bank wait. has <laughs> not said what you said. The World Bank says it will express its view yes. if the bill becomes law. Becomes no, no, law. no. no. Oh, they have issued, oh, hold on. They oh, have oh, issued a different thing and said their working relationship with Ghana is one that is ongoing. And that too, they have their own internal policies on these matters. That's completely different from well, the, I, I, I don't want, I, see, law. I don't want to wait to find out late in the day mm -hmm. what their internal processes are 
and which implication will have for Ghana's economy. But if you are managing this country, obviously, Samson and the, uh, my brother, they are sitting in opposition, so they are not see, they are not preoccupied by the daily hurts of Ghanaians, and so therefore the urgency. The daily hurts. Oh yeah, yeah. The urgency. The urgency. What more than oh, destroying the please, economy? Please, 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 please. The urgency. And the importance that you attach to state decision making is not is not something that you are preoccupied with. So no, you but you've freely, already destroyed the freely, economy. Oh, please come on. You can so the guy can sit on the fence freely, just accusing, just like how you were sitting on the on the fence, blaming the blaster players. That why can't they score? Why are they allowing people to score? But when they put you in there, they will score as Ghana about two thousand goals if you are playing. You but are the point, the me. point, the point I am making to you is that. The decision or that note was to provide guidance mm. in giving context to what is possibly at stake. Mm. And so it is not by any stretch of the imagination, uh, uh, more or less, a stop to the ministry and, or and I ask the an, question, an admonition. I ask the question, question in my introduction. Mm -hmm. Is it false, you know, scaremongering? or alarm that the Ministry of Finance exactly. raised in that. Because as we know it, we have not less than 60 countries that have criminalized homosexual practices or LGBTQ plus activities or have similar laws to that effect. And all these jurisdictions continue to work with these multilateral institutions. Mm. Well, I admit that some of them are not in the circumstances economically that we find ourselves. So why is Ghana so jittery about that? Samson, in, 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 in political uh, advice, uh, advisement, you would, you would have to spell out all the possible outcomes for your principal for a decision. So the staff at the finance ministry, they have a responsibility to show all the likely impact all the likely outcomes of that decision. So the principal takes a decision. So that document mm. is by no means a decision. Okay. It, is, it is providing the facts, the context within which you are making the decision mm. for the minister to advise cabinet and therefore president to make a decision on the matter if it becomes necessary for discussion. So it's a preparatory document. It's not a document that is conclusive and has not resulted in any decision. What does it change if the Supreme Court okays this bill? Well, then if will the, will the argument change? No, the argument will not change. Why? Because one, you yourself had mm -hmm. indicated President Akufuado's unequivocal, unequivocal position saying that same-sex marriage and associated practices are not something he will condone. Number two, the party he belongs to, the party he led once before, that party is a conservative party that is not, by its nature, aligned with such practices. So how do you reconcile Three, your position oh please, with please. that? Three, in Parliament, as flawed as it is, our members voted in concert with the majority to pass the, uh, with the minority to pass the bill. So there is an express position of the president, his party, and his parliamentary party that this is not an act we. We condone. Mm. Now, in the context of democracy, you know that public, public policy or reforms are subject to public opinion. And so therefore, if it becomes necessary, which was a point the president made and uh, what he calls, uh, Edu G was mm. appearing to uh, suggest that he was changing his position. If public position, if Ghanaians in their, in, in their consensus Things that this is the way to go, addressing all the, the infringements and the offenses in terms of the law in the, the bill, the president will have no choice but to sign it. But why? But it is important to ensure, mm -hmm. Samson, mm -hmm. before you get to that point mm -hmm. of signing or not signing, to ensure that the bill is kosher. Why, 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 there are challenges. why do you leave such an important decision mm -hmm. to a Supreme Court bench of five or less or nine? When we know at his, as it stands now that the majority of Ghanaians overwhelmingly endorse it. The president is setting them up but, see, see, for see, public radical. You know, see, if you make that argument to be most unfortunate, mm. because mm. in the construct of our government, there are equal branches. So the power of the Supreme Court is not subservient to that of the executive. Mm. 
Same way, the legislature is not subservient. So there are three equal important organs of the state. So therefore, having the Supreme Court have a say on the matter is not, okay, it's not inferior to what decision the president will make. At yeah. So page, therefore, at page yeah. six or five seven of the Constitution Review Commission's like report. Why? At page six five seven of the Constitution Review Commission's report, mm. paragraph one two nine. Recommendation for constitutional change. The commission recommends that the legality or otherwise of homosexuality be decided by the Supreme Court if the matter comes up before the court. They were being urged on to introduce the prohibition mm. into a constitutional, a constitutional review, mm -hmm. and they declined, they rejected. FDG, what do you have to say about that? They said, let the Supreme well, Court I haven't decide. landed, but I want him to answer that question. Yeah, because now that's, yeah, yeah. that's in their court. Right. Yes, so when you say uh, Kufado is is uh, prevaricating first all, or first of all, or is is uh, double speaking or doing whatever, blowing hot, hot and cold, what do you say about this? And you remember that this was accepted by President Mahama with a white paper. No, that's what I'm saying. That at that point, mm -hmm. okay, it was a strict issue of recommendation. The white paper accepted it as it is. As we are speaking now. There is a particular bill in Parliament to deal with that matter. That bill today had had the input of the current Attorney General. At least he's the principal legal advisor for the government. That's right. The views expressed, in fact, constituted one of the delays in the passage. That's true. My understanding is that the leader of the majority in Parliament at the time of the passage is a very respected lawyer. No such constitutional issues were raised prior to the passage. So this post facto, I mean, it, it, curiously, okay. uh, no, something no, no, curiously. No, no, please, please. The that finance let, minister, let, 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 no, let, just let, land, land, quick. The, the finance minister, I mean, Anta, mm. who represents a predominantly Muslim constituency, Karaga, was part of the people who passed this law. Mm. So where from this view expressed in his notes? during the passage. And so this whole post facto rationalization does not do the president any good. If and any attempt fair, to if you are being it fair will not be view, helpful. If you are being completely fair to the view expressed by the finance ministry, yep. you should not stop at where they say. I am looking at the, the president two recommendations. The presidency the president may have to defer assenting to the bill until the court rules on the legal issues tabled by key national stakeholders, CSOs, CSOs and SRAG. You don't stop there. They give you another level where they talk about you have to consider possible expenditure re-rationalization uh, to accommodate the shock from the potential redrawal of resources and leverage on the Ghana Beyond Aid principles and change the structure of the resource mobilization. We improve, we must improve our domestic resource mobilization efforts by working towards our medium term tax revenue to GDP target of 17 to 18% and eventually wean ourselves of the unsustainable dependency on development assistance. These are the long term So they gave proposal. two views, no, not one. Long term view. proposal. Mm. The views just expressed were the long term. How do we anchor Ghana beyond aid among others? All right. Richard is saying we have a contingent problem, mm -hmm. a collapsed economy, economy in distress. And for that matter, no, nobody, if, we are, no, losing, if that. we are losing that amount of money this year, it will have dire consequences for the economy. That's entirely different from saying that what is the long-term view in anchoring it, so thank you. No, no. Like, thank but it's not purely this. Hold on, hold on. But, 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 sorry, sorry, let him conclude. But, Sina, just look at let your own please. Article please. 106, please. Article 106, Clause 7 and 8. This puts the president power relative to assent and refusal and what you ought to do. That's right. When, a pending, when it is transmitted to him, a pending it has not suit, yet been transmitted to him. A pending suit, I do not see. Okay, as a bar. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Yes. So, but you see, and, and, and Edward G, I think be advised in the matter that this law has far-reaching implications. And so therefore, there is no haste in trying to sign that law without making sure all reasonable consideration 
are taken into account, the, which the, is your, why, your which is why, which is why, which is why, which is why is 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 right for the president to encourage all of us to wait because really his position with respect to the act that is being proscribed is is manifest. No. He is opposed to it. His party is opposed to it. <laughs> I am opposed to it. All of us of the liberal conservative stock, we are opposed to that. So and there's no arguing, doing? please. There's no arguing the point. But to legislate something in a space that is shared not only by you, by other people, we live in a global village, you have to address all the sensitivities that obtain in that space. So please don't, because of your parochial political interest, railroad all of us into taking a hasty decision. And I think that the president is right today. Posterity will remember him for making this cautious step in, in moving towards signing this law if eventually all of its measures are deemed to be constitutional and does not offend people's rights by the Supreme Court. And that's where the final line is drawn. So I want you to be advised by that. I am not. See, the second, well, looking that's at the, your choice no, because it's your the, political no, interest and so you refuse to be advised. The, the point is, I didn't know, no, no, please, please. Look at the conduct see, of the president. See, in fact, the way, in law. Uh, the, the, the matter of the, the attorney general having made input, attorney general is not infallible. So, ah, so please. He's the principal legal advice. So, so you are trying to say, what, 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 what's your problem? Sorry, sorry. No, but you know the law I better than hear him. I'm not saying me. And then we take a break. <laughs> I'm not saying sorry, that. I'm, I'm not saying that I know the law better than Attorney General. So I am just telling you that the fact that he made input doesn't mean that that law is foolproof. <laughs> we have passed <laughs> laws in this country. In fact, the very constitution that we have here, the people who made it or who, who sat in the, uh, the cons uh, cons uh, constitutional assembly to draft this. Were they not le learned people? Don't they know the law? But then we are sitting here canvassing that that constitution should be reviewed or should be amended. Is that not the case? So you cannot say at any material moment that a certain law is foolproof and therefore uh, Attorney General made an input so that law is completely infallible. You can't say that. So on the basis of that, the Supreme Court in our, in our construct is a final authority. Okay. Notwithstanding the Attorney General, the Supreme Court is a final authority. Right. So let them have their say on the matter. What verdict they return will inform what direction we proceed as a people. And I think that that's right. Okay. The uh, only uh, group of people in this country, Samson, just briefly. The only group of people in this country, no, the only group of people in this country who are opposed to an obvious um, uh, illegality, for me, once that have been demonstrated, is the NDC insisting that right. an illegality be Thank committed? You. Thank by you the very president. much. Now, Going ahead of the Supreme Court to sign the gentlemen, law, gentlemen, which gentlemen, must gentlemen, be refused gentlemen, by the Supreme gentlemen, Court. Gentlemen, so please, gentlemen, if you don't have any you. issue, find Thank issues. you very much. No, Richard, Richard, Richard and don't be politicized. No, let's not get something that is. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. No, no, I'm not personal about it. Thank you. But they are trying to. Now, let me do this. Let me do I need to take a break, Richard. Thank you. I need to take a break, but I'm taking the break on the note of. Prof. H. K. C. Prempe, uh, one minute, uh, you know, take <laughs> on this. Prof, the, is the president, you know, running ahead of himself by the comments that he has made? And is he abdicating his constitutional obligation? The law is clear. Article 106, if the bill is brought to him, he has seven days within which to indicate whether he will assent to it and will go ahead to assent to it or he will not assent to it. And if he's going to refuse to assent to it, he has within 14 days to state in a memorandum to the speaker the specific provisions of the bill, which in his opinion should be reconsidered by parliament, including his recommendations for amendments, if any. Why does he do this even before the bill comes to him? Uh, Please unmute your mic. Let me, let me also commend you for uh, bringing uh, some good balance to this conversation and uh, uh, by uh, inviting my good friend, Dr. Uh, Arthur Kennedy into the conversation. I very much enjoyed his characteristically uh, thoughtful comments on the matter. Um, and uh, I think it's ref it was quite refreshing to hear him again uh, on 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 your on your show. Now the 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 issue of the presidential veto and and you know I think listening to uh, Tamaklo and and Richard on this, you know I don't really envy 
envy you at all for trying to <laughs> referee, for trying to referee this this uh, uh, conversation between uh, a, a social democrat who you know supports an anti LGBT bill and a conservative uh, uh, who doesn't. Uh, usually, that's not how these things are divided. But that is Ghanaian politics for you. And I think that one of the interesting points that Richard makes, which um, I think you know, we shouldn't trivialize, is that when you are in opposition, you know, it is easy for you to take the position that you know, uh, my, my uh, friends in the opposition have taken. And when you are in government, uh, then you can also, you know, you cannot afford to take a narrow view of, the, of these matters. And this, again, reflects the difference between how a, a member of parliament would look, come to this issue and how a president would come to this issue. So a member of parliament who is concerned, elected from a particular constituency in the country, a small part space in the territory, concerned about a local electorate, can afford to take the most extreme views on these matters, completely obl oblivious of the big picture. A president, and this is why the veto is there, right? Why 106 is there. You would ask yourself, why would anybody framing a constitution give the president, one person, the power to overturn through a veto the decision that has been made by a collective body of 275? Is, he, is this person the only wise person in the country? Why do we give that person such awesome power? The reason is simple. When you are a member of parliament, you can afford to just cater to your narrow electoral constituency in your, in your, in your district, in your constituency. When you are a president, as we have, an executive president, who is both head of state and head of government, you have to actually bring to bear a whole host of issues when it comes to making a decision. And in fact, it is not at all illegitimate as head of state to be minded by the fact that we are also a member of a global community. We subscribe to certain norms. We are a respected member of that community. We invite into our space tourists. We invite into our space experts, diplomats. We send uh, you know, some out ourselves. So we are part of a community of nations that interact. So it is entirely appropriate for a government uh, led by a president to sit back and say, look, let me weigh all these considerations, right? Whether it's economic, whether it's cultural, I have much bigger stakes to deal with than you, a lone member of parliament, or you in the opposition party. When you are in government, you know, things can change. So, and we've seen this kind of stuff before. Governments, people in opposition take a position. When they come to government, they say, well, we, we came to meet a different uh, set of numbers, uh, so to speak. So I think that we have to understand why we have in the Constitution a provision like 106. It is there as a check on overzealous legislatures catering to a small, narrow electorate in their constituency and being, getting carried away by that. Because Parliament is a public, you know, institution. It plays, it, it, it acts in the open. The gallery is open to the public. The people can play to the mm. gallery. When the president is acting, it's behind closed doors. Why? Because then they can do it more reflectively, more thoughtfully. They can gather a lot more right. uh, evidence, consultation from mm. the ministers of health, education, whatever, and say, you know, what is the thing about this bill? What my own regrets, and I think my good friend at Kennedy expressed it, is that you know basically there could have, there should have been, in the course of the two years that we've been debating, some definitely some effort and attempts to really intervene for the executive to step into the conversation, not just with the opinion of the Attorney General, but very early on, get a conversation going, reach out to the sponsors, reach out to the speaker, reach out to all, you know, the interfaith community, have broken a conversation. We would have been happy to join that conversation to come to a sensible, thoughtful, you know, uh, accommodation around this issue. We can't just take very extreme positions on this matter. Mm. We have to come to an accommodation on this issue. And I think that the executive could have used what the Americans call the bully pulpit of the president 
you know, which is its immense influence and political resources, to gather us behind, you know, a, a, a round table and said, look, I, in the end, have to worry about the country's image globally. I have to worry about, you know, the Thank issues you. of tourism Thank you. and all these things. Let's have a conversation. And Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, we, 